Hi, today's good person to know is Dwayne Reed. He's an entrepreneur and an entrepreneurship project officer at Kingston University who gave a talk on networking. Now, did you know that 98% of people feel intimidated in networking situations? Well, I didn't know it was that many, but I know that there are some because you always tend to find the people that feel like you in the situations. And that tends to be me where I go and find the person who's on her own or his own and think, yep, they don't like networking, I'm going to go and network with them because at least we've got something in common, we don't want to talk to anybody. Well, that's not the point of going networking, as we know. Now, in this video, Dwayne identifies what we should and shouldn't be saying in a networking situation. And did you know that people make their mind up if they like you or not within the first three seconds? And as far as I'm concerned, that's just not enough time. And so we've got to really change their perceptions, especially if we've got off on the wrong footing. And also Dwayne um, identifies his top tips, which I have to say were really, really useful. So I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching. When you're young, one of the first things that gets drilled into your head is don't talk to strangers. So as you're growing up, it's almost like you've got to teach yourself out of that. Because especially in business, you kind of got to talk to strangers to kind of get on. 98% of people feel intimidated in networking situations. You feel a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious, not sure what you're going to talk about. 98% of people feel exactly the same. First, I'm going to talk about what networking is not. And I think this is more important than what networking is. So I don't think networking is selling. Neither do I think that networking is about working the room. I don't think that networking is about a rapid business card exchange. I think networking is about building relationships. And you need to be thinking of it as a win-win. You're not just selling their, your product or service to them. They have to benefit too. These are the three key ingredients that you need to kind of be working on whilst you're networking. How much somebody knows you how much they like you, and how much they trust you. Trust is very, very important. So there's no point in lying. Don't try and give a false impression of your business because you will be found out. You've only got three seconds to do a first impression, and that's when presumptions are made. Three seconds, and we can't do nothing about that. Before you even talk to someone, they've made an impression of you. But you can back it up or change it by doing a few things. And I'm gonna give you some easy things that you can do. Okay? You can change the game from the initial kind of concept. First rule, which may sound very, very obvious, is to be there. You may have just come from a bad situation, you may have just come from a bad day at work, but you've got to put that to the side. You've got to be positive. You're here to start relationships. Anything that's happened prior to the event, just block out for a little while. You're at the event to start relationships. Make sure you've generally got a smile on you, because if anybody wants to talk to you and they haven't spoken to you before, the easiest way to invite them to a conversation is just to be having a nice, warm smile on your face. This is my number one rule for a handshake. Put right hand in front of you. What you'll see is you've got this L shape. Make sure your L connects with the other person. They're busy on their phone. They're in a networking event, trying to make contact, but they're sending out emails. Now you can do that email in half an hour, like business isn't gonna stop if you don't send that one email. The one thing that you want, I think, that you want everybody to remember if you're networking with them is your name. I say, hello, my name is Dwayne, Dwayne Reed. What I do is first name, first name, surname. And I do that for two reasons. I speak quite fast. So when I say my name twice, it reminds me to slow down the second time. And for the second reason is as humans, we usually remember the last thing we heard. The biggest thing that stands between you and that better life is excuses. You can get in contact with or speak to anybody. Don't think because your business hasn't started yet, you haven't got a website, you haven't sold anything yet, you can't network or talk to anyone. Anybody will be willing to talk to you, so don't think you can't talk to them, okay? So credibility is not an excuse. Any time you think you're the minority, actually use it as your strength because people will remember you for that reason. You're awesome, we all have stories that make us awesome. So think about some unique stories that you've got and bring them out when you're talking to people. It makes you a greater person. Six soft tips that you know you can remember in your networking situation. It comes this awful situation where people say, I don't know what to talk about to break the ice. There's three things in common we have with everybody at any networking event that we go to. When you go to a networking event, every single person has taken a journey. You will all have a connection to the person that organized the event. So connection to event organizer. The weather is such an easy conversation. It's always going to be too hot, too cold, too rainy, too windy, hasn't rained for two days. There's always going to be some sort of
got problems. If you get a business card that you do not want to keep, so someone just throws it in your hand, what I do, and I do this 100% of the time, I put that business card in my right hand pocket. And as soon as I get out of that event, I dispose of it because the most valuable asset you've got to yourself is time. People with business cards that you may have an interest to follow up with or start a relationship, they go in your left hand pocket. But before you do that, annotate the business card. The date that you met that person, where you met that person, why you want to keep in contact with that person. Make sure the main thing that you're doing is asking questions and listening to their answers. You shouldn't be talking about yourself. You should be trying to be interested in them. When you're describing what you do, try to start with the words, I help with, and then try and describe your business. If there's anything to remember, please remember this follow-up thing, especially with those key contacts. Please exaggerate the time it's gonna take you to follow up with them. It's better to say, I'll get back to you in a few weeks and get back to them in two days, then do the opposite. Be remembered. Try to do something that makes you memorable.